It is Party Time Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. Studio 22, the mothership. We are flying deep into the nether regions. Uh, we're headed into the weekend, folks. It is Thursday, although it feels like a Monday, Party Foul Steve. It feels like a Monday to me. I'm lo- I've am i lost my voice. That's Gotta, what, what were you doing? What, what'd you do to lose your voice? I just talk, man. Yeah. I talk. You know what it was? It was last weekend when we were doing those shows in, where were we? Mississippi and Alabama. And after, during the show in Mississippi, I was backstage and we had like a state senator there and all these various reps were there. And you try to talk over all the other noise that's going on and you strain your voice and you just don't get over it. That was a loud, like crowd. It was loud. A lot of loud people backstage hanging out. And that's a rookie mistake for me. I know that you're supposed to say, excuse me, can we go to a quiet place if we want to have a conversation? Uh, but anyway, we got a big. Sh- I bring all that up because we got a big show tomorrow night, Friday night, Arlington Music Hall, Arlington, Texas. I'd love to tell you to get tickets, but it's sold out, yep. and we just can't help you. Sorry, can't help you. You missed. You missed the opportunity. See if you can sneak in, folks. Yeah, just come on. Be like those little kids at the old baseball games. You know, peeking through the wood, peeking through the hole. <laughs> you know, he travels with security. Yeah, the future governor of <laughs> no, state I have, of Texas. He yeah, actual security. No. <laughs> I actually got a general badass that's, uh, yeah, watches my back. At least I hope he, I, he sometimes he looks a little it's, drunk. It, and it's not the guy <laughs> sitting next to you. So, no, it's, uh, never know. Never know. I wouldn't mind it if Chad Robichaud was my security every now and then. Chad Robo's on the show, Robichaud. And uh, good to see you, buddy. How you been? It's good. Good to be here. Yeah, welcome back. Good to be back, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you're on here. Got your son, Hunter. Yeah. on the show as well yeah i told hunter really cool. i said man i feel like i already i've known you because I, I was praying for you when you were deployed and yeah. you were overseas i say you basically saved his life i mean he'd be blown up on the side of some mountainside Dude, if what, if i'm the reason prayers. i'm the reason he came home <laughs> yeah thanks chad yeah I'm, home. <laughs> I'm the reason hunter came home i got i got i got uh i got a straight shot with the big man i do yeah I, it's we, we, we text you know uh no i uh thank you for your service hunter dude i and I, your dad I, so proud of you. He's so proud. You know this. I don't have to tell you something you don't already know. He's so proud of you. And uh, he was worried. I ain't gonna lie. For a man of faith, he, yeah, he was, worried. was worried. He knows. I mean, yeah. Force Recon Marine himself. How many deployments? Eight deployments for you? I did eight. He was my ninth because he went to the same place. And so I was saying that eight deployments were... Yeah. I enjoyed those. Yeah. The ninth, the ninth one with him going, that was my hard one. You like knew you what said. he was going into. Yeah. That's a oh, bad well, deal. My, you know, and then my family, you know, my dad was a Marine infantryman in Vietnam. You know, me being a force recon Marine, and then we have Hunter who served in Afghanistan as a Marine as well. And now my youngest son, Hayden, we can pray for him now. Yeah. Because he's, uh, he's in uh, his MOS training. He's a brand new Marine. Wow. Uh, in his MOS training. Well, that's right. awesome. Well, yeah. yeah. Marines in the house, that's the only security you, yeah. you need, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. Yeah. I know. I, and we add Party Foul Steve in there, too. So, you know, the. Wait, uh, that's not Natalie. No, I know, right? <laughs> Exactly. Like, Listen, I'll tell you, you know, you know the toughest, you know, no, Jennings is definitely not Natalie. Uh, nor a Marine. For nor that a Marine. You know, the toughest people in my life, though, are Natalie and Lisa and Sarah Gonzalez. When people come at me online on social media, I turn Sarah Gonzalez Sa- loose she's on She's intimidating. Them. She will cut you. Yep. She yeah. will cut you. Uh, she just goes at people. And so every now and then when I'm feeling sorry for myself, I just turn her loose on people and, and she just, she gets after them. So, uh, no, I'm surrounded by good people, man. I'm glad you guys are here. Hunter, glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, you guys, y'all have a great uh, Mighty Oaks Foundation, which, of course, is just one of my favorite groups on the planet. You guys are doing an awesome job. We're going to talk about that a little bit, remind everybody what it's all about. But you got a new documentary coming out, That's and right. it's, uh, it's available now in certain places. We're going to talk about that. I watched it. Powerful. Well done. And, uh, and, but I want to get in, uh, as we move on, we're going to take a break here in a minute, but I want to talk a little bit about some of these new revelations with Dr. Fauci, the emails, mm-hmm. some of the things that have driven our culture and our behavior over the last year, how that's affected the vet community, because it really has affected the vet community it in has. a powerful way. Yeah. So we're going to talk about those things and, and get into it. We want to remind everybody, of course, go to blazetv.com, sign up. We just went through a deep platforming on YouTube where they, we couldn't load anything for a week. Uh, that if we get another strike, it'll be, I think be 30 days. So if you missed the show all week long, make sure you're signed up blazetv.com slash chat and use promo code Chad. They'll give you a whole free month and you can, you can stay up to date and man, people are getting desperate, Steve. I, I know. And I'm getting messages. Like I did something wrong. Uh, it's yeah, like, they, they I, were it wasn't my desperate. fault. I didn't do it. And it was Just all done. over, uh, <laughs> something we said about coronavirus and they, they, you know, YouTube, 
they'll shut you down in a heartbeat. And now we're seeing all this Fauci stuff coming out, which says, you know, all of us conspiracy theorists, we were right. <laughs> yep. We yeah. were right. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get into some stuff. I you know I get nervous even talking about it these days. Jen, I do too. I don't want banned. Well, Facebook said it's okay now. Yeah. Now we have permission to say it was. You can it was now in a lab. say yeah. it's from China. Yeah. 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 Might have might have been created in a lab. Anyway, you, you get one so, more strike, like and this show is going to turn into us just sitting around <laughs> discussing literature. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we used to get hammered drunk on this show and talk about all kinds of topics, and they never penalized us for that. Anyway, we're going to get into it. I warned you about home title theft, where cyber thieves remove you from your home's title and become the owner. I said you better get home title lock because it's coming. Well, if you're on Facebook, you know they had that big breach I've been telling you about. Facebook had over 500 million accounts exposed to cyber thieves, and according to a retired uh, FBI cybercrime expert, everything the thief needs to take over as the new owner of your home has been leaked. Your name, address, personal information, it's all out there. The thief forges your signature on a quick claim deed stating you sold your home to him. He's going to leave you in debt or even have you evicted from your own home. you got to do what I did. Protect your home's title with Home Title Lock. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. Register your address. They will tell you if you're already a victim, and then you'll get to sign up for 30 free days of protection. And uh, it matters right now during this high-risk breach. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. Use promo code RADIO. That's HomeTitleLock.com. Use promo code RADIO back in a moment. We're back. Chad Robichaud is in the house. Uh, he founded a great organization known as Mighty Oaks Foundation. Uh, love what they do. They are tremendous group of folks over there working with our veterans you guys tell me in a nutshell what all you guys are doing with mighty oaks we do a couple of things the, our, the uh, main focus is recovery for uh, ptsd those being diagnosed with ptsd we've been at war for 20 years uh now uh, so lots of folks that, that have served our country are still being diagnosed with ptsd the veteran suicide epidemic is still over 20 a day uh since COVID lockdowns the active duty suicide rate is up 35 percent uh, so we're dealing with veteran suicide. In our recovery programs, we do 32 camps a year. We uh, Active duty, veterans, spouses. We even do first responders. We pay for everything, including travel. Uh, we've had 4,000 graduates over the last 10 years, but now we're doing about 1,000 per year. And then we do resiliency programs where I go to bases around the world, and I speak on uh, resiliency, combat readiness, spiritual resiliency. Uh, you know, the military talks about the pillars of resiliency. We really get to focus on the spiritual pillar, being a faith-based organization. And I've been able to speak to about 150,000 active duty troops, giving away about 100,000 copies of my book. Uh, we just put a new book out called uh, Behind the Lines, which is a military devotional. And uh, we're giving those books out to the troops. And then the last thing we do is I get to work in D.C. a lot on veterans policy, mm -hmm. helping to uh, bring faith-based programs back into the VA and DOD. You know, President Trump had me uh, appointed to be the chairman of the White House's faith-based uh, veterans coalition. Um, and I worked on the Prevents Task Force. I worked with the president to get some executive orders signed to bring faith-based programs back into the VA. And you've, had, you've had a few things that really kind of miraculous. You shared with me a video yeah. here recently that they put out, the military put out. Yes. It's kind of unheard of for them to do that, right? Well, uh, yeah, I was just, just this Veterans Day, Special Operations Command had me, they have a podcast called SOC, uh, Softcast, Special mm -hmm. Operations Forces Cast. And, um, and they had me on, they interview my, interviewed me, I shared my story, I talked about how faith was such an instrumental thing in my life through you know, become, becoming a Christian and how those things really helped me get well better after my deployments and struggles. And uh, I was, one, happy they didn't edit it. And then yeah. they ended up putting it on their official platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, SOCOM official, put it out for Memorial Day. Uh, so we just have tremendous favor with the military. Because I think we, you know, the military talks about the pillars of resiliency, that uh, mind, body, spirit, social. And the military does a good job of helping guys be mentally tough, physically tough, you know, socially, that's being in the right team. But the spiritual foundation, that spiritual pillar, they don't often define what it even means or how it could be effective to be combat ready and yeah. then resilient uh, through those hardships and able to be able to bounce back with that. And so the chaplaincies for the last, you know, years since President Obama came in has been ha uh, just hand handcuffed. And so for organizations like ours to be able to come in and define what that means, we're at a time in our military after 20 years of war where they, they're like, hey, if it's going to work, uh, it's really help our guys, then we want to hear about it. Yeah. And uh, so we're able to bring those answers. And you're talking about guys that are coming home quite literally with demons. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of things going on in their head. 
a lot of spiritual things that are going on in their head. They're having to deal with it. You yeah. got a new a documentary. It's out. It's called uh, Never Fight Alone. Yes. And uh, you is produced along with you guys at Mighty Oaks as well as I Am Second. Yeah. Uh, fantastic deal. Yeah, they're awesome. And just a fantastic half hour documentary, your story, but it goes into the details of of what these men and women coming home, what they're dealing with. You yeah. know, you got less than 1% of, of the population of America who are members of the military. They relate, having been deployed, they come home dealing with a whole different set of paradigm yeah. and a way to see the world than the average person does. Uh, it, things that we take for granted, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a bag on the side of the road in a neighborhood, just somebody's trash. That's, that's something else in, in Afghanistan. Yeah. It could be, it could be an IED, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, and you, you bring those things home with you and it takes, it takes time. Look, uh, combat not everybody shares my faith. I understand that, but I believe we were created and we were never created to see and do the things that we experience in mm -hmm. combat. We were never intended or created to see traumatic events in our life. Now, is it necessary that we go do, do those things as military people? Ab absolutely. It's necessary for, you know, young men and women to raise their hand, make an oath to our country, go defend people around the world that can't defend themselves, keep the homeland safe. It's necessary, but it, we were never created to. And so when we are exposed to those things, those traumatic events and seeing those things, those are, those are, there's, there's consequences to that. Yeah. And I believe there are, those are spiritual wounds and a spiritual wound requires a spiritual solution. And, uh, for me, I had tried everything. I'd been on the medication. I had been through counseling. I had, had professional success and financial success after my service, but I was still a mess dealing with debilitating panic attacks, almost lost my family through a divorce and, uh, attempted to take my life and become another veteran su suicide statistic. And so while I tried all those things and they didn't work when I simply made the choice to uh, align my life with the life I believe I was created to live and started responding to those things through some biblical principles based on a mentor that stepped in my life, I began to find restoration. I began to find hope. And ultimately I found purpose again. And that purpose manifested for me in a deep burden of my heart to share what I discovered with others. And so I've been doing that for the last 10 years. And, and I've seen that same impact that I've had in my life and that radical change in my life manifest in the lives of tens of thousands of veterans through the work that we do at Mighty Oaks Foundation. And we wanted to tell that story through the documentary Never Fight Alone. It covers my story, a Navy SEAL named Luis Rivera, a Marine Corps machine gunner named uh, Brandon Kunith, and, uh, and uh, Erica Kelly, who is the chief command, uh, a command master chief in the entire U.S. Air Force Reserve. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we have some great people in there like General Boykin, Sergeant Major Kent, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. And so we, we, we got this documentary made, I Am Second, who's a phenomenal organization based out of Dallas here. Yeah. They, uh, they partner with us and they make, if you haven't seen I Am Second's videos, they make incredible videos. They partner with us. And then I met a man named Jim Clock, who's a Hollywood producer involved in making, also, aside from this documentary, producing my life story movie, which will be coming out in, you know, in another year or two. Awesome. And so Jim Clock uh, works with global distrib digital distributor distributors, and they agreed to take the documentary and help us spread it globally. And so the way it released, we went to the Museum of the Bible, which if you guys haven't been to the Museum of the Bible in D.C., amazing, mm. amazing. Uh, the Green family, owners of Hobby Lobby, Mr. Steve and Jackie Green, uh, put, you know, almost a billion dollars into this museum. It's absolutely incredible. You got to see it and it's in DC. But they, I met with them and they asked us to host, they asked to host it there. And uh, we could, we premiered it at the theater inside the Museum of the Bible. Best place to do it. Admiral uh, Todd, who's the chaplain of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Black, who's the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, came in official capacity. When we talk about military favor, they came in official capacity to uh, introduce the documentary and, uh, and really endorse Mighty Oaks and the work that we do. Uh, so these are the leaders, you know, some of the top leaders in the military. And, uh, and we, we, we released the documentary there. And then I Am Second has it exclusively for 45 days before it hits the digital streaming platform. So can people get it at, at their website now? Yeah, you can go to IamSecond.com backslash never fight alone. And you can watch it there. And uh, it's obviously I'm biased. I love it. Yeah. You, you I love it. See I, it yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you an honest assessment. It's a pretty documentary. It's well shot. Yeah, it's beautiful. And Hunter, here's why I looked at this thing. I'm watching this documentary. I'm like, this is pretty. This is like, this is real America. Like, I'm enjoying the aesthetics of this video. 
And then there's Chad Robichaud's face. I know. And I'm like, 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 like Yoda. Like Yoda. What's, what's so good looking about that? <laughs> <laughs> big, big ears. No, ball, man. I, was like, hair. I was like, I, you've got all those pictures of you and Kathy and you when you're young and stuff. And I was like, it looks just like Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Just like Hunter. I was going to ask who's going to play you, the early you in the movie, but <laughs> I think you got I, him. I could do it. I got the hair still. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I might as well. It's a generational thing. I passed my hair down there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you definitely got strong genetics, man. You've touched these kids. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I love I love giving you a hard time. I, I love it, man. Not, it, not like Epstein. But exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, different different type of touching. Uh, the the uh, and Epstein didn't kill himself either. But I will say this: uh, it's fun. It's a fun. It's a fun on a very serious topic. It's it's a fun documentary yeah. to watch. It's aesthetically pleasing. They did a good job of storytelling on this. And, of course, a kudos to you for, for doing such an excellent job in, in that. I think every American should watch this video with their kids, with their families, because th this tells a story. I mean, obviously, it's, it's not an infomercial for Mighty Oaks. Right. But it, we, the reason we want Mighty Oaks in it because we want to point to the solution. Everyone talks about veteran problems, uh, PTSD, suicide, all these things. But you could talk about those things, but there also is a solution. And we want to point to the solution. And, uh, and we offer that at the end of the documentary. But wh while, it, while it has that intent, it also is a way to educate America on what our troops have been doing for the last 20 years because the news cycles in the media have been hijacked by po political rhetoric mm. and uh, haven't really uh, emphasized on what, you know, our troops are still deployed right now. No one, no, even, it's, it's amazing how you know, but a lot of Americans don't even realize that American troops are still deployed every single day, 24-7, right. you know, out defending people who need to be, taken care of around the world and, and defending our homeland yeah we, we used to talk about it all the time yeah news used to talk about it all the time you, you saw the footage you saw the highlights you saw you got the reports now everything is how many people have died from coronavirus right. it's donald trump this dr fauci yeah. that uh all of these these crazy things well, i was on newsmax the other day and uh and you know they're showing clips of me <coughs> of, of young people you know in their early 20s yeah. saying that we need to cancel memorial day they don't know anything about our military right. and what our military is sacrificing because we don't talk about it anymore. It's pulled out of education systems. It's not on the news. And uh, so next, this gener current younger generation doesn't appreciate the military because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. No, they just want to enjoy the long weekend. Yeah. 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 Kamala Harris. I know a lot of, I have a lot of friends, families who can't enjoy the long weekend because every minute they're thinking about, you know, the lost loved ones they lost. Right. Yep. <laughs> uh, on Memorial Day, I, I was traveling, um, and I was listening to news on satellite radio, and they were just talking about how, you know, over the last year, people haven't even been able to go visit Arlington Memorial. Right. They haven't been able to go visit the cemetery. Uh, and, and how different people, you could go visit if you had a family member who was mm -hmm. buried there. And so these people who volunteered their time to go in and put a flower on a grave, take a picture, and send it to another family member. These are weird times we're living yeah. in. That, that a lot of this is being erased uh, or even not even recognized. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I want to talk about in the next segment is get into what we're kind of glossing over through this whole coronavirus craziness that's gone on and how it's affected um, these folks who are suffering with PTSD. Yeah. Folks come to Mighty Oaks Foundation. They come to Mighty Oaks. They go through the program. Cost an arm and a leg. What, how do they get in there? Are they able to? I mean, can these guys, average person, afford to get in that thing and go through it? 4,000 graduates now, we've not charged one person, including travel. So we pay for the entire Love program, it. all expenses paid. We pay for their flights, everything. And, and that is paid for by the support of a grateful nation. Uh, it's free to them. It's not free to us. Sure. We do about $3.5 million a year in programming. So if you want to support, you go to MightyOaksPrograms.org. Support there. If you're a veteran listening or a family member or spouse, active duty, first responder go to mightyoaksprograms.org learn about the programs you just apply it's pretty easy to apply on there and one of our team members will get right to you yeah and the, and the testimonies coming out of that are phenomenal yes uh mightyoaksprograms.org that's right is that right that's right uh it, it's it's just phenomenal i want you guys to watch the documentary you can get it at imsecond.org dot com dot com i always get those mixed up imsecond.com backslash never fight alone never fight alone you need to do that i uh I'm glad you're here. We're going to get into some stuff here. I, and I'm Good. going to get your hot takes on a couple of different things that are going on these days. Because I've been fired up, man. <laughs> I, I've been I've been on the go all week yeah. long. And, and the, the Fauci thing that's coming out now is, I just want to, which I've said he's the biggest yeah. con man in history. I mean, this guy is, it, this is. He's the biggest politician in, in D.C., I think. Right? No he's question a, about it. Definitely <laughs> the he's highest He's not a bad doctor. He's a, he's a politician. No, definitely he's the a politician highest politician with a white guy. coat. 
So I, this is a crazy deal. I want to get your take on some of these things, and, and we're going to show you some videos as well, and uh, you'll be interested to stick around and see those. Hey, in 2020, over 8 million guns were sold, 8 million. Uh, that combined with efforts to defund the police and rising crime has driven the cost of ammunition through the roof, uh, if you can even find it. Many Americans have stopped training with their firearms altogether because it's just too expensive. Every time you go to the range, you pull the trigger, you don't hear boom, you hear cha-ching. That's why iTarget was invented, to give law-abiding citizens like yourselves a cost-effective way to train in the safety and privacy of your own home. No more inconvenient trips to the range or expensive practice ammo. Just download iTarget's proprietary app, proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm. Yeah, I said laser bullet, and start your training experience. Dry fire training is going to help you develop muscle memory. It's going to sharpen target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, and a whole, whole lot more. iTarget Pro comes in all the major calibers, including 223 uh, for your AR. So literally, you can stay sharp with almost any firearm in your home today. I'm going to save you 10% plus. I'm going to get you free shipping with offer code CHAD. I spell it Chad at checkout when you go to itargetpro.com. It's the smartest way for you to practice and it pays for itself immediately. That's the letter I, targetpro.com. Itargetpro.com. Offer code Chad. Hang tight. Be right back with the Rubble Shaw, baby. So, Chad Robichaud, of course, UFC bantamweight champ at one point in time. Not the UFC. It was it not UFC? <laughs> not UFC. I showed you what I know. <laughs> I love doing. I love messing up my acronyms on all that stuff. It's like when Clint Emerson was in here, and I was like, "You were CIA," and he's like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> I was I was bantamweight, bantamweight champ, uh, Legacy FC, Stri Legacy Strike Force, Bellator. Uh, you know, eight, eighteen at uh, eighteen and two, and. At one time, I was ranked number six in yeah. the world, so at at a good good ranking. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I would tap out. <laughs> Bottom line, I would tap out. Six years ago, five years ago, mm -hmm. I just saw on Facebook I made a joke. It was one of my all time favorite jokes, and it pissed a lot of people off. It's probably good then. It was good. <laughs> I said, uh, "Karate is Japanese for my kid can't hit a curveball." <laughs> Okay, and so pissed a lot of people off, right? And, uh, That's a good joke. So, uh, write that down. And, and I caught a lot of flack for that, but it, my Facebook notified me today that that was like five years ago today that I did that joke. I'd do it all over again. Just oh, for, it's, I it's, think it's funny. That's a good one. But let me let me show you guys a clip. This is, now this is a wrestling match right here. Okay, uh, Caleb, would you play clip number three, please? Walking down the wall, got a. Uh, and here comes the dogs. This cubs there. The cubs are there. Mama's fending off the. And here comes this lady. That is my wife. With her, with her wife. <laughs> the lady comes out there to grab it. She pushes the bear. That is my. That would be my wife with my dogs. There it is. Slow mo just shoves the bear. That's a tough lady right that there, is. Robo. That, that, that was is. The, that was the t the challenge for who was the real mama bear. Yeah. <laughs> <And that> lady. <laughs> I mean, yes, this yeah. woman comes charging out of there. I love my dogs, but I probably would have tossed the little one. <laughs> yeah, I'd <laughs> like. The little one was the last one fighting. That little one was ready to scrap. The one, I know. Sacrifice one of them. Yeah. I know. Ran away. They that don't know right they, Little ones don't know they're that little. No, they don't. I mean, it's not the size of the dog in a fight, right? Yeah. You charge something, it, it doesn't know what to do. Yeah, that's like that old joke about the two guys are hiking, and uh, ooh, ooh, the bear comes out of the woods, and one guy sits down, and he takes his hiking boots off and starts to put tennis shoes on, and he's like, why are you changing shoes? You can't outrun the bear. He goes, I don't have to outrun the, outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's like, I, if that bear had come on into the yard, that lady would have had a... Oh, yeah. It would have been a match right there. <laughs> that would have been a mess. But you saw the bear turned around and it, it left. It, it, had, well, it had its cubs, too. It had yeah. the cubs. So she was obviously chasing after those cubs, making sure they're okay. This is a clear endorsement of the Second Amendment because if that bear had had a gun, 
<laughs> Wouldn't have happened. Castle law in Texas, baby. You got a right to shoot. Uh, that's uh, that's insanity right there. Let's talk a little bit about uh, so some of this stuff. The, just the craziness that's going on in the world. Play play clip number two, Kayla. I think as these bills were going through various legislatures, I remember the NCAA put out a statement saying any state that enacts this, we're not going to hold events there. And so I called the Speaker of the House in Florida and I said, did you hear what they said? And he's like, yeah, I said, we definitely got to get this done. You can't be cowed by these organizations or particularly by woke corporations uh, from doing the right thing. And so my view was throughout this whole time, we have to protect our girls. It is discriminatory to force them to compete against biological males. And so if the price of having a tournament is that I have to deny equal opportunity to hundreds of thousands of young girl and women athletes throughout Florida, uh, I am much more uh, willing to stand with the girls and to hell with these events. I can remember one of the video clips you sent me when Hunter was deployed mm -hmm. was him having a wrestling match out in the desert with uh, uh, with a big Russian guy. Yeah, it's one of my Georgians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a, a black belt in judo. <laughs> I've obviously done jujitsu and wrestling my whole life, so I was like, "Yeah, let's get it." <laughs> yeah, it was it was solid. That yeah. dude was a monster. He was absolutely strong. <laughs> yeah, Insane. I mean, he was like one of them strongman competitions. Yeah. Huge, uh, big old dude. Yeah, they're big on their judo in Georgia and Russia and yeah. I mean, yeah. Judo, if I if, if, correct me if I'm wrong here, because because I don't know crap about this stuff, but judo uses the your opponent's weight and momentum against them, right? Yeah, I mean judo is uh, judo is a sport like on the feet throwing. It's to throw people. Right. And you throw people, they hit the ground, and you know usually you score right away. Yeah. And uh, so it's not you don't get on the ground to grapple with judo. Right. Well, that dude was a monster. Yeah. But I didn't see any uh, female Marines jumping in. No. To, to, to take on either <laughs> one of you guys. Uh, you notice it's never the other way around when it comes to this transgender sports debate. It's right. the men that want to compete or the biological men that want to compete in the women's sports. It's never the biological women that want to compete in the men's sports. These are men. These are cowards, first of all. Right. And, and uh, where are the feminists on this? Yeah. Like, uh, does, do guys like you and I have to be the only ones that have voices to stand up for these young girls and women? I mean, this is that's what it's about for me. It's about protecting these girls. Yeah, I, I've been around sports my whole life, and I've I've seen, you know, girls, uh, especially like wrestling girls and stuff, work so hard their whole life, committed to sports, dedicating hours and hours and sacrificing <laughs> meals and time and all this, and they get to where they could get a scholarship to go to college, and their scholarships can be taken away because some guy couldn't. Yeah, could, you know. Yeah. Compete with compete against other guys. Couldn't compete with other guys. Yeah. It's, a, it's a shame that we're even having these conversations. Yeah. That's a bill that has to be signed into law. It is. And I mean, it just it's disgusting that people won't stand up for these girls. It's all, you know, they talk about women's rights and it talks about protecting women, but when it comes to something like this, they won't stand up for these women. Yeah, and in this current 87th legislature here in the state of Texas, guess what? We didn't stand up for women. Uh, we we what? still, we didn't fight for this. I even uh, listened to Jenner the other day, Caitlin Bruce. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever good, her good guy, his name guy. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but you guys really got balls. even against uh, <laughs> at least up to high school level against you know the guys yeah. competing with the women. So to hear him or her say that, yeah, that's well, he's athlete. Yeah, yeah. He's Caitlin a, Bruce, whatever. Yeah. I mean, he gets it, and and he's caught a lot of hell from the transgender community mm -hmm. because of his outspokenness in in regards to that. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about women that are going to get hurt. Uh, that's the obvious thing. There, they're never going to be able to truly compete. And these are world-class female athletes here that, that, you know, correlate on the level. I mean, they're, they're far superior to many male athletes if you, if you measure it commensurately. Yeah, I mean, you had this, this dude a while back, Phelan Fox, started fighting MMA, beating the heck out of women, broke, broke two of them's orbital bones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, somebody should have been put in prison to allow it, it, right. this. How did we even get that far? Yeah, let some it, dude get in a cage and beat up some girl. How's yeah. that okay? What happened yeah. to don't hit, men don't hit women? Yeah. And you're right. You, you mentioned, you know, where are the feminists? Where are the Me Too people? Where are all these outspoken, the vagina hat wearers? Where are those folks? They're at the parade. Well, they're, they're too busy <laughs> naming Caitlyn Jenner woman of the year, yeah. uh, which is stupid. That is an insult because— It's an insult to women. I mean, It's we, an insult to women. It's a, it's a compliment to us. We The first year— uh, as a as a woman, we won. <laughs> yeah, we won. We won. I told you men were better. Yeah, I mean, uh, it really is such an insult to women. It is, and it's 
it's the height of objectifying a female based on her body. Yeah. Because if all I got to do is is change my body to look like a woman, then then the only thing that makes me a woman is that body, that thing that we say. Yeah, objectifies totally, totally objectifies women and. And uh, I, I can't see how they don't see that. It's the same thing with this critical race theory. I mean, that's the most racist thing I've ever seen in Horrible. my life is the critical race theory. Horrible. To say that, that white people have some kind of advantage over, over you know, peop- minorities and we have to somehow help them. Yeah. To, I mean, that's, that's so insulting. I mean, I think of, you know, people of different races that I'm just really strong friends with and I'm asking them. And they're like, yeah, that's offensive to me that this whole critical race theory is the first. Yeah. That's the most racist thing that you could be talking about right yeah. now. Continue <laughs> this conversation. I'm going to draw it back to why chad's here in a minute you'll see where i i'm gonna bring it full circle or as jim saki says we're gonna circle back let's circle back yeah. hey when it comes to mobile phone car- carriers you have a ton of options now uh what's the difference well there's only one christian conservative carrier in the country there's only one with broad dependable coverage who sends a portion of every dollar you spend to support the first and second amendments veterans first responders and the sanctity of life plus you're going to save money with them. That company is Patriot Mobile. And right now, you can get free activation plus a special gift when you go to patriotmobile.com slash chad. Patriot Mobile has the broadest nationwide coverage and uses the same towers as all the major carriers. So you're going to get the same great service. Plus, they have plans to fit any budget. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team has the highest rating among wireless carriers, and they're standing by to help build you a customized plan today. I want you to go to patriotmobile.com slash chat or call 972-PATRIOTS. Uh, Patriot, 972-PATRIOT. Veterans and first responders save even more, so make the switch today. Get free activation plus special gift with the offer code CHAD. That's patriotmobile.com slash chat or call 972-PATRIOT. Be right back. Hey, you know that thing about that critical race theory, and I'll shut up about all this nonsense. I just get on these, I get on these soapboxes about it. But that's, that's the new slavery, okay? It they, is. they can't put people in chains. They can't put white culture in chains. But mentally, they can enslave you. And so what they do is uh, they're, they're teaching folks, you're damned if you do, damned if you, if you don't. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what you do. You're a racist, right? Mm-hmm. So if I'm a bartender and a white guy and a black guy walk into a bar— and I served the black guy first. Well, I'm a racist because I showed my white guilt by giving him privilege. Uh, when, when, why would I select him over the other person? But if I give the white guy the drink first, mm-hmm. then obviously I'm a racist because I preferred the white yeah. guy. It, you can't win with yeah. any of this stuff. It's, so, it's all evil at the core and meant to divide yeah. Americans. Yeah. I mean, but these are the things we're talking about. We're talking about these things on the news. We're not talking about our troops. We're not talking about the military. We're not talking about what these guys are going through. You said suicides are up 36% amongst veterans. Yeah, 35%. Not veterans, active duty. Active duty. You know, it terrifies me to think what that veteran yeah. number is because these are people who, have, who are already dealing with anxiety, depression, suicide ideations back home in their, in their homes, probably trying to transition back. And their VA appointments, they weren't allowed to go to in-person VA appointments. They had to do telehealth over over Zoom and Skype or over the phone. And uh, so the mental health, because of lockdowns, yeah, didn't allow them to get the care they needed. So we don't know what that number is. It terrifies. I, I don't think we'll ever know. I don't think they'll tell us. No. But on the active duty side, it's measurable, and it's been up. This active duty suicide rate spiked thirty five percent last year, and military commanders have attributed it to the lockdowns. Well, you can't. You can't give these guys and gals the help they need mm-hmm. over a Zoom call. No. Can't do that. What you guys are doing, you're doing it right. Yeah. Um, actively bringing these folks in, spending time with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an ongoing process. You can't do that. And now we're starting to get the emails, the Fauci emails that are coming out, and we're seeing that so much of this stuff was a farce at best. Mm-hmm. We said it. You know, we said it. We, uh, said, we said it came from a lab. Yeah. We, we said it. We said, you know, the masks were a joke. He said they were at first, and then he said he wasn't. Yeah. Then, this, this, thing, this thing is... Um, he makes Trump look like a prophet. I mean, it's, a weird, it's weird how that works, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Chad, it, it's... Um, uh, this... Um, I've got all these emails, and more than 3,200 pages of emails... Um, covering the period from January to June 2020, 
provide a rare glimpse into how Fauci approached his job during the biggest health crisis of the last century, showing him dealing directly with the public, health officials, reporters, even celebrities. Uh, there were more than 800 pages of emails received by the Washington Post uh, on Monday. The emails uh, revealed him sparing over, sparring, I'm sorry, over an antiviral drug uh, with Ezekiel Emanuel, former Obama administration health advisor and uh, fielding questions about vaccines, receiving an update from Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook's plan for a coronavirus information hub. Zuck also asked whether the social media company could provide resources to accelerate vaccine testing. Fauci even responded to an offer from actor Morgan Fairchild to use her Twitter account on his behalf. Um, th these are, these are the, we're finally starting to see council culture working the right, yeah, way, the right way in this yeah. regard. Because once these emails came out where he was kind of, he's been shown to be pretty hypocritical and a liar, which I've said over and over again, biggest con man foisted on Americans, uh, is definitely in recent history, that's for sure. Now they pull his book. You can't pre-order his book anymore. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. Because it's all a lie anyway, and he's going to profiteer off of, the, off of the American people. I mean, the guy never shut up. He's been on TV 24 hours yeah. a day. How do you have time to write a book? Of course, it's just like Andrew Cuomo. Right. None of them wrote a book. Right. They're just getting a big that. check for doing it. That's exactly right. You know, uh, I mean, this guy shouldn't just lose his job. Mm -hmm. He sh he should he should go to he should be he arrested. Could, be, should be arrested. I mean, th what Ameri what the American people need right now is to see people held accountable. Yeah, and he needs to be held accountable. For this people died. People right. people people died. We talk about like the mental health crisis, not getting the care they needed, suicides, uh, child abuse that we don't know about. People, women who can't go get mammograms. Uh, people lost their livelihoods their businesses i mean this is people have have to hold this guy responsible for this increase of cancer deaths because people postponed going and getting uh, exams checks getting therapy uh getting checkups getting their therapies done uh because again they were told that you can't get into these healthcare mm -hmm. facilities and these clinics because they're being overrun by you know covid situations yeah um uh, these and I mean I literally read one of the emails where he said ah the the molecules are too small for the mask to pass right through it right the whole thing and I'm sitting there at the airport yesterday and I'm looking around and I'm like this is the world we live in mm -hmm. people have been so duped into these half face safe spaces these these face diapers y'all know I call them sheep shit everywhere I see because they're all over the floor they're on the ground everywhere you go they're on every street and every gutter yeah. and the whole thing what about the, the straws <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, right. I mean I mean not to be graphic but if we were in it right now and somebody and one of us ripped it you could smell a fart through those things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you could smell a fart through them exactly COVID, COVID's going right through it <laughs> exactly that's it the 100% this whole thing is so I you know and, and then we've been told oh you're killing grandma you're killing grandma you just want to kill grandma no, we just want to use common sense. This I think they did of, kill Grandma in New York. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you when you when you take uh, uh, COVID patients and put them in the nursing home. Yeah, you know the general estimate was six thousand to sixty five hundred deaths. It's probably more like ninety five hundred to ten thousand yeah. deaths that Como's uh, policy is responsible for. It's insane. And you factor in, and this has been one of the biggest things on the news outlets because you and I have had private conversations about this that I've continued to bring up uh, if people say, well, so what's the problem? Why didn't you just wear the, why don't you just wear the mask? Why don't you just stay at home, isolate? Because you have men and women who've come back from combat that can't do that. Right. I mean, they've emotionally, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, they can't do that. I can't. I mean, yeah. I consider myself a pretty healthy person. I can't lock myself in my, in my house. No. Uh, it's not It's not good for my mental health. I don't think it's good for anyone's mental it's health. It's not but, for mine, and I yeah. haven't seen shit. <laughs> yeah, so, so. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not good. It's not I've good. never human, been shot at. <laughs> human beings are meant to interact. Yeah. And I tell you, like, since two weeks, I did, I did the two weeks. Uh, yeah. Two weeks to flatten the curve. I did it. I'm like, I think, it's not, I didn't feel like I was far from my freedom to do it. I'm like, I'll, I'll chip in. But after that, I'm, I got on, and uh, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I tell you, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community has been training. Uh, in, in, yeah. in, and I know it's not related to what we're talking about here, but I'm just giving my personal example. Like, we've been training. We're putting our fingers in each other's mouths, spit. <laughs> butt, Sweating on each butt other. Butt hairs. Like, oh, and, I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, Jiu-Jitsu is gross. Yeah. And you're sweating and you're in each other's face. You're touching each other. I don't know anybody in, in uh, the last <laughs> two years doing Jiu-Jitsu that has died of COVID. Not no. one. And, uh, I mean, by, by what they're saying, we, I mean, there should be no jujitsu anymore. We should all be dead off the planet right now. Yeah, but but uh, you know, it's not the case. We're all healthy. When I was seeing you guys, and I knew you were, you guys were still training and still working. Uh, I almost expected like a 
a speakeasy somewhere where somebody <laughs> knocks on the door and, sh- and, and there's a, there's a guy in a dojo who's like gives a password. That's he- <laughs> I've been in a couple of I, I've been I traveled to California and that's how I train. You go really? in the back door, the the whole the whole front windows are taped. They got paper taped up. Uh, I can say it now because they don't have to do it anymore. But Clark Gracie, like is yeah. a good friend of mine, and I trained at his school. The whole front of it was taped, and you got to go around <laughs> back and knock, and it cracked the door open. It looked like, all right, come on in. <laughs> Tighter <laughs> than a polling place in Philadelphia on election yeah. night. Yeah. It was blocked out, man. Yeah, that's how that's how we were, that's how we were training out there in California. But they the were still training, was still training, and no one died. <laughs> that's amazing. You isn't know it? what? You know why? Because uh, most people, because they because they really do care about their health, and people they work out, healthy. eat well. Yeah, healthy. People are healthy. <laughs> I mean, you're not walking around with a whole bunch of comorbidities and weighing 400 pounds and, and you know, with a big soggy butt like mine. I, you know, that's, that's <laughs> the thing. You guys are actually healthy. That's the beauty of it. Can I say something that's just kind of been weighing on me? I, it, you, something you alluded to earlier. You talked about finding that place where you get your life in alignment spiritually and, mm-hmm. and you, I call it rhythm of life, right? I yeah. got a tattoo. One of my tattoos right there. That's what it says, rhythm of life. I, and that doesn't just... That doesn't just go for people with PTSD. No. You've got to find that rhythm of life. You do. I know when my life's out of rhythm. Mm-hmm. I know when I'm playing those uh, those bad chords. Mm-hmm. And, and I encourage everybody out there listening to this thing. Because coronavirus and the shutdowns of quarantines, all of this stuff has affected everybody psychologically, whether they want to admit it or not. And, you know, I'm a grown man who's consistently advocated for mental health and said, go get the help you need. Talk to God, talk to your doctor, talk to your therapist, get the medication you need if that's the case. Um, But there's no shame in it, guys. There's no shame in any of that stuff. Uh, If you're a veteran and you're dealing with these things and you know if you are, you may not want to admit it to the people around you. But uh, get a hold of the folks over at Mighty Oaks Foundation. Get a hold of Chad. Get a hold of his team. Uh, They're quick, man. They respond. And for those of you out there who have the means to do it, I want to encourage you to set yourself up so that you can donate to them on a monthly basis. I don't care if it's just $25 a month. You can do that at uh, Mighty Oaks Programs. You can do, get, you, is, that, is, is that the quickest way for them to do that? Mighty Oaks Mighty Programs. Mightyoaksprograms.org. Yeah, dot org. Go to O-R-G. Yeah. Mightyoaksprograms.org. Uh, hang tight. We're not done. We'll be right back. You girls like a man in uniform? Hunter Robichaud. He's single, ladies. He's oh, single. Man. Got him I didn't know this was going to come. <laughs> I know. I know. Listen, all you got to do, all you got to do is reach out. I I, I have a, sta- uh, a a horse in this race. Yeah. I need I need grandbabies. He needs grandbabies. <laughs> Robichaud, he's, yeah. start, he's like a, a woman wants babies. That, these, want these granddads to. want grandbabies. I got to create some, keep my jiu-jitsu lineage alive. I know. I can't be too old to be in a match <laughs> with them. got to so. keep training. <laughs> I got to keep training. I need some grandbabies. Hunter, you on, you on Instagram? On Instagram. What's your Instagram title? Uh, Hunter Robo 0861. 0861, ladies. Hunter Robo 0861 on Instagram. <laughs> Open them private messages up. You never know what you're going to get. So. But only the ISIS. <laughs> yeah, blur out that face. Yeah. Like, like Robo's book, <laughs> Unfair yeah. Advantage. You need to make sure you get that book. But tell me the name again of the devotional that you just. So, and Unfair Advantage is my main, my main book. That's we just released book. we just released a devotional called Behind the Lines. Behind the Lines. Military devotional, 365 days of, uh, you know, just. Uh, some just daily inspirations with a biblical scripture and a little prayer for the day. Love it. Uh, it's, you know, nice leather cover. It's a real good gift for military folks, too. Yeah. Mighty Oaks Foundation, make sure you, make sure you are supporting them. Next week, Party Foul Steve and I are headed to the Pacific Northwest. That's right. We are coming back to Boise, Idaho. Going to be doing a show there. And the very next night, we are going to be in Everett, Washington, just north of Seattle. So uh, go to watchchad.com. It's where all the fun stuff is. And come see us. We're going to be in Port Charlotte, Florida, the week after that. That's the third week in June. I think I'm right. Uh, going to be there for three nights. We're bringing a crew with us for that one too, aren't we? I don't know. I we got no some some extras. I, I on don't that even one. know what's going on yeah. anymore. But I know you're going to have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. We love you. God bless you. Talk to you then. Bye. Yeah.